one day I went to Takradi and uh, to visit my beloved and I think your pastor, Bishop Kakra, he was uh, there. He and his brother stole my car. <laughs> I didn't even know that they had stolen my car. They deceived me that they were going to wash the car. <laughs> and I, and I, after now, I don't even know where they went. <laughs> Some rounds. <laughs> but then I led him to Christ because he was into so many bad things. And his family thought that he was uh, lost. Even his father wanted to get him a job at SSB because he felt that he wasn't serious about school, but he wanted to marry. So he should get a job. So, when I talked to him about Christ, I prayed with him. And when we finished praying, I said, do you believe? And would you go to church? He doesn't, you know, Kakra doesn't have much expression so, on his face. So, he said, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought, this guy is not serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy is not serious. I mean... He's going to be one of those people who had a good chance to hear the gospel, were prayed with, and did not take it serious. But he did take it serious, to my surprise. And then he, he started to grow in the Lord. And eventually, he became serious in church. And I think he was in the youth ministry. And then in Kumasi, he... he we started the church. Our first church that we ever started was uh, Kumasi, I believe. No, Geneva. And the Kumasi church, Asukwa, is, was the second. And that was Bishop Kakra. Was the one there. That was the second church of all the churches. So since then, I'm giving you this background to explain to you that we've been building the church. We bought a building, railways building. That's the Asukwa Church. It's right by the railway line. And we built at Bantama, different uh, places in Kumasi. And, you know, he is a fanti. So, and I told him, you have to learn how to speak tree and preach in tree, which he did. How to preach. We used to tell him how to preach, to talk to the people. Because at that point, he wasn't preaching well. <laughs> oh, yes. Over the years, for him to do well in the ministry. And then the church started to grow. Because the church, it is a spiritual thing. And it is by the gift of God. And so the church grew and it grew in Kumasi and all the different churches also started to grow. And that is a great blessing that we have seen. Now, um, I, I'm just trying to say that what we started out to do, we have been successful at doing it. Yes, we, we have been very successful by the grace of God at building churches. Like, if you travel and you ever visit some of the churches that are in some of the nations, you'll be, you'll be amazed. I mean, this year, I was in uh, St. Lucia. You know, when you see the members, they are established members Members that you can even do fundraising and give envelopes, thousand dollars, thousand, whatever. They will become, they will be given on all these churches. I was in Belize. I was in uh, um, St. Lucia, Grenada, all the islands. I had a small plane. We were going from island to island. If you, you will be afraid to sit in the plane because it was like a, a very fearful plane. I just going from island to island. 
Very frightening, but because you can almost feel the air blowing in, on, on you. I used one of those planes to go to Takradi once. Visiting all the churches. And you'll see each place, the congregation, old time members. And I visited the Pacific Islands also. Solomon Island. When you see the members of a church in Vanuatu, it was in a hall like this. Vanuatu. That's where Philip is. Is Philip here? All right. Is it Vanuatu? Which Vanuatu is in the Pacific? Yeah. And so many places. I'm just trying to say to you that we have been successful by the grace of God in this vision of building churches. All right. And it has been 35 years of this building, traveling, preaching, building, traveling, preaching, building, traveling. The Morning Star Church or the, I don't know what you call it. What was it called? Kaja Anointing was involved in the Liberia mission, taking canoes full of tiles, canoes, to Liberia. Through, because of where the places were, and building buildings, and then Sudan, also building building churches, and in Accra, and in Guinea, these are what we've been doing. I want you to know that the mission to build churches by the grace of God. I don't know what your business is, but this is the business that God gave to us. I will build my church and the gate of hell will not be able to stop it. I just want you to know by the grace of God, it has worked. And the churches exist. And they are there all over the world, wherever you may imagine that we have, we, we, we have, we have been successful. Now, and I'm saying this, you can learn from this in your business. When you are successful, you have to manage the success. If you don't manage the success, the success will dissipate and vanish. And the success will not be maintained into another generation. That is why, you know, you must have heard the term investment banker. What is it for? Those, those banks, you can't go and deposit 500 CDs thousand cities and so on. To open in many places, to open is $500,000 or $1 million. That's how you open the bank account. They have people who have money. What do you do with the money? They do invest. They say they will invest and then manage it for you. Because how to manage success is another thing. Amen. So by the grace of God, we are managing the successful church building operation, which has been ongoing since 1988. When I heard that voice from today, you can teach. And Elias City Church is just one of the efforts that we are making to manage the successful building of churches for the last 35 years. How is it, how is it managing? How does Elias City Church help to manage the success that we have experienced? Number one, at a certain age, if you are a pilot, British Airways, from 60, you can't fly again. You, can, you cannot. How many of you would like to be flying from Accra to London they announce you that the old man is not feeling well? <laughs> the old man has fainted. <laughs> you can't fly. 60 to 65, you can be a co-pilot. 65, finish. So you see that age, even with soccer and all these things, there's a certain age that you can, you have to take certain decisions. 
and in our church, whether it's done in other churches or not, we have decided that we will want to have younger people to manage what, by God's grace, we have been able to build. Amen. Amen. Learn from it and be successful too. <laughs> Learn from it and be successful too. That we want our churches and our conveners and the bishops and different people not to be too old. Amen. Amen. So that the church has a future. All oh, many churches have traveled across. Most of the, many of the churches are passed by old men. And when you, you can see, I, I mean, you can see that certain organizations and so on, because of the age of the people, everybody is that age. And it's not easy to change. But by the grace of God, we are moving on. And all through the churches, we are having um, younger people to handle some of the complex churches. Some of the churches are so complex and so large. I was just discussing the churches in uh, Kumasi when I was coming here. They were telling me that Atonsu and that side, they have I mean, 42, 41 churches. And then this other side, that's uh, Tikrum Tower. There are 30, 30 something church. That's the single church we started at Sukwa. And then the other one, which other one? The Bantama Council. At Sukwa, there are also how many? About 30. So it's like there are too many. Huh? Too many. <laughs> how to manage these churches? Do you get what I'm saying? How to manage these churches? It's also something fantastic. And by the grace of God, we are striving to uh, manage the churches and also have younger pastors in various places. Amen. Clap for us. Clap for us. <laughs> number two. Number two. What about the older who have been doing this for 35 years plus. The older are also going to carry on in the ministry. Handling things that are smaller. You see, we are managing the churches. We are managing what we have been successful at. The churches are very successful. If I tell you the income of our churches, if I tell you the income of a group of churches in Accra, you'll be amazed at the power and the strength, even the financial strength of the church. Oh, yes. For successful, it's successful. So, we are also building an army of gray-headed men one day I will give the command all those who are dying their hair will stop and then we will all we will all become grey that is a certain group who have been deceiving everybody that their hair is black or shaving off all their hair <laughs> Because there is a place for the gray head to be very fruitful. If you look at the Israeli army, Netanyahu and Co., they are all white hair. The defense minister, Netanyahu, and all the generals, they are white haired men. There's no young person there at all. They are elderly, wild people doing, fighting and waging a very wild war. So there is a place where the older are also going to do great things and fight other battles. The same church. So our church is divided into many different groups. We have denominations and then we have um, 
networks. They are all different types of church and different types of management. You see, like you take a car like Audi, VW, it's owned by the same, but they, they look different. And even some other companies, they all have this all the same thing. Kia and um, Hyundai is the same company. When you go, to, it's when I went to Korea, Vanada, it's the same company. But they've given the two things different names. For reasons best known to themselves. When you are buying a Hyundai, so Hyundai is better than Kia. Okay, let's go to Hyundai. <laughs> and you see people rushing to the Hyundai. So, Hyundai is better. It's better. When I went to Korea, I was doing some investigation about the car. So it's the same company, the same people, same everything. So for whatever reason, those differences are there. We have networks. We have denominations. We have matrices. Matrices are run by lay people and older men. Denominations are run by conveners. Networks are single churches. Single big churches like the Kodesh or like Morning Star, where most of you were before. And like uh, Dawenya or even Kolegono. We have about eight of them, seven or eight of them. And then we have a new type of church called Misak, New Independent Standalone Church. It's also independent and it's a new thing. And that is what Eliah City Church is part of. It's a new, independent, standalone church. I'm saying all this so that you understand. Because I've heard different little comments. Some of the comments are not kind <laughs> comments. Yes. So I'm saying, I'm saying it so that you, you, you hear. Yeah. I heard somebody say that, oh, Abishaw Kakra is leaving the church. If he's leaving, I'm also leaving. I can tell you who the person is. I don't know if she's here. That was the first comment the person made. If he's leaving, then I'm also leaving. You see, it's a shame to you. Leaving what? And leaving where? <laughs> leaving what? You can't leave your family. So the new independent standalone churches we are also eight, and I'm one. I'm, my new church building is just coming up here. Yeah, just down here. I can show you. I won't show you. I don't want you to come there. Be here. Be here. But Bishop Kakra has been going there all the time because he goes to eat some food near that place. So we have new standalone church that are independent. What does it mean independent? Independent means whatever you, whatever you want to do, you can do because we consider it's a subjective decision that we've taken that this church can, be, can stand alone. And, be, and if it wants to start branches, it can also start. And we should be clapping for ourselves that we have been able to achieve such things. We are managing the success of the church. Yes. We are managing the success of the church. And uh, it means that, it, it, it means that the, the pastor is free to do whatever he feels like. If you want to wear Liverpool uh, shirts. I don't know if Kakra is a football uh, person. But if you want to wear football. Chelsea on this side, Liverpool, fine. <laughs> but in the other churches, we don't wear football shirts. We don't, we don't allow it. I don't want it. Otherwise, I also wear jockey jacket because I, I, I'm into horse riding. <laughs> but whatever you want to do, you are free to do it. That's a blessing <laughs> and an opportunity.
The Lord is moving. And we keep moving as he moves. Then I also heard somebody say that uh, we are, uh, instead of letting the, uh, uh, somebody has worked for a long time, then it's like now he has, he's, uh, he's been sacked from whatever and he has to go somewhere. I'm saying, I want you to know that your negative thoughts are demonic in origin. They are demonic in origin. Yes. They are demonic in origin. Yes. There's nothing like that. Yes. Where you say uh, the person is whatever, so instead of let the person be a sad, we are not going to sit down and let the church, we are, we are going to run the church the way we believe is good. And we have done, no, I've never done any harm to Kakra. All these years, I've only done good things to him and for him. And if I myself am moving from, you see, I don't want to say, I haven't told them, you give me a lot of problems. I don't, I don't need problems. Yeah. But if I myself am moving and others amongst us are also doing that. We have eight of the Bishop in Tefo, Bishop Saki, Bishop Eddie, different, a lot of us. We are eight are doing that. Don't read negative and evil into the forward. If I had not moved from the Kodesh to Legon, we would not have first love church. And many of your children who are being blessed in that church, you wouldn't have first love. So don't, don't, don't have evil thoughts about good things that are being done. Kakra has also not done me any harm. There's only one thing that he's done that hurt me. Yes. It's none of your business. It's none of your business. I don't know why you are even asking me to, to say that. Yes. But he has not done anything wrong. Rather, if at all, he has... When you talk about the missions and the churches... Few church, you, I, you can hardly point to any cathedral which has started missions in Sudan, Liberia, financed it, built it, different things, done all the things. What again? What do we want? So, you know, I just want to say that I'm saying all this to explain why. That's why I'm here. He asked me to come. The name Elias City Church, I gave the name. You see, the, the new, listen. The, the idea, just the idea, just the, even the idea. He never come to see me and say, I want to be on my own. I, I need to be on my own. I have a, a calling to be on my own. It has not happened. If it has happened, if it has happened, you see, truth is a very powerful thing. It's only because I've been invited here to speak that I'm saying. Otherwise, I wouldn't have, as usual, I'll make no comment. Let them talk. Truth is powerful. The Bible says that, the truth shall set you free. If truth didn't have power, it wouldn't be able to make people free. Truth has a lot of power in it. So you can say whatever, but the truth is very strong and very powerful. That's why, that's why the truth shall set you free is because truth inherently has a certain power. And no matter what is said, no matter how much mess there is, truth is very powerful. What is actually the truth in this thing? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You get it? Yeah. yeah. So, he has not done anything wrong to me, to the church, to anyone. We are advancing. We are advancing. And we are together, by the grace of God. We are managing. So, listen, before you clap. Something that started 35 years ago. No, you just add 30 to your age and see where we'll get. For years we've been going through, only trying to build churches, trying to raise people, trying to work with people, trying to let the church grow. This is all that we've been doing. All oh, this is the whole work that we've been doing. By the grace of God, it has worked. It has been successful. Banks that started with us, they are no longer there. 
Don't you know any banks? Even political parties, UNC and others, they are not around. But the church is still there and it's still going on. So, I'm happy with that. So, like I said, he has never approached me, never written a letter to me to ask. I want to be on my own. Somebody said, are you legitimizing Oranguism? That's another question that somebody asked. I mean, you can't even imagine the kind of ideas and thoughts that people have. Yes, what a thought. Where do you get these things from? That's why I say that certain thoughts and ideas, they are just pure demonic. Yeah. So, he has not done anything wrong. We are rather trying to still be there in 10 years and beyond. We are still doing the church. Younger people are coming up. The churches that we built are still there. Are you not happy that the church that you started, uh, you don't even know one church in Asokwa. Now, say, they say this place are 42. Atonsu side are 42. This side are 38. This side are 30. Is it not a joy to see that the thing, and it is still going on. It is not collapsed. It's not finished. I hope I'm not taking too much time. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, rather, we are pressing on. And then I decided, because I felt the Holy Spirit uh, guided me that, just as you've been able to start denominations, try and start some standalone independent churches. And that will also be a great achievement. So I came up with the idea, the word Nisak. New standard. You've been able to form denomination. If you take Liberia, it's a denomination. At least seven different cathedrals and branches in the whole country. It's a denomination. It's all called, what is it called? Straight Gate Church. Straight Gate Church. Someone said, why do we have different names? Because why has a long tail? So I felt that by the grace it would be a great achievement if we are able to start Stand alone churches, not denominations, because the denominations, we have over 50 of them that are networks and series of churches. And so this idea came. And some people were selected. You can do this, you can do this. And that is how it came about. And I gave the name to the church. I called him in the morning. I said that Eli Olive Tree, but Eliah means olive trees, like a source of anointing. I said, this is a good name. Eliah City Church. And that's it. So, I want you to be encouraged here. I will also go to Morningstar and preach there. I'll go and have crusade there. I'll do anything. But it's only that time. I don't have time. He has invited me. I'm here. It's the same church. And we are building it. That's our work. You two, I don't know what your work. What do you sell? What do you sell? This is my work. I also do church. My, my work is churches, members, souls, pastors, shepherds. This is the work that we do, and this is what we have. And by the grace of God, we are doing it, and we are happy. So, please, don't, don't think, don't have bad thoughts. Yes, don't have negative thoughts. Yes, there are some people always hoping some, to hear something bad. Ask your neighbor, is it, is it you? Are you the person who said uh, those things that he said? Are, are you the one? I don't want to hear anything from anybody. Never come. I hear you said this. I hear you said this. I mean, it's nonsense. I don't want to hear any such thing. Never come and tell me. I hear this. I hear this. I hear. What I'm, you are hearing is what I'm saying here. This is all. All right. So, be fruitful. Charlie, we are going to see him soon. Jesus is coming soon. And we are going to see Jesus soon. Everybody should prepare for eternity. 
Everybody should prepare. When Bishop Kakra was coming, for, uh, wanted to work for the Lord, that was in school, he felt that he should work. I told him that, look, we can't, I want him to, but we don't have any how to pay him. He said, no problem. He bought a photocopier machine and started, he was a photocopy specialist. <laughs> that was the business he was doing, photocopying in Kumase. And he was able to use that photocopy to build a house. Yeah. So he's got a business anointing. Those of you whose business are not working. <laughs> Can I have an amen? amen? We are going to see Jesus soon. Amen. He is coming. We will be there. All these things we are doing is what pleases him. That will matter. Nothing matters. Nobody needs, look, the churches, eh? we are so happy when one church manages itself. Look, the church becomes a burden. It's a wild thing. That's why when the church was formed in, in the book of Acts, by chapter 6, there was, a confu- there was confusion because the members had come, there was food, something, problem, I mean, so many things. So when you have sections of the church that are well run or being managed, we are so happy. And sometimes you see some orangos, you think that as if you want them to be, you want them to be under you. We are so happy that people are managing their own life. So if somebody can manage a section, it's beautiful. If young people can also rise up in the ministry, it is beautiful. If this church and all the churches that we've been able to start can be there when we are gone, huh? it will be beautiful. Look at James McKeown. Orangus rose up against him to drive him out. When he traveled, James McKeown, when he traveled to England for a holiday, and came back. His right hand man whom he put there to preach. Organized whatever. And said that he's no more the pastor of the church. And then they went to the government. To Kwame Nkrumah. To try for him to be deported from Ghana. And Kwame Nkrumah set up the Blay Commission. To look into James McEwan's issue. And the Blay Commission came out to say that. Recommend that he should be deported from Ghana and Kwame Nkrumah stepped in at the last moment some people when there was a demonstration in front of Jubilee House the left side was those who wanted James McEwan to be deported and the right side were those who were supporting James McEwan you can read the history and there was a demonstration in front there and there was a man who was close to Kwame Nkrumah he walked through them and went to the gate and opened, went through, and he spoke to Kwame Nkrumah. And Kwame Nkrumah, took, they took a decision that they will not deport him, even though the Blair Commission said they should deport James McEwan. They were deporting the whole of Church of Pentecost. So. No, this is, you see, that's why I said that one day we will all stand before God. All the different things that we've done, we'll see why we were doing them. Is it good or bad? And James McKeown was given the offer. He said, change the name of your church. I think he had to lose the properties and other things. And you no more use the name apostolic. But, so he chose Church of Pentecost. And then they started. That's the Church of Pentecost that you have today. And in 19, 1980, 1980, 1982, somewhere there, James McEwan handed over the church. He handed over. You see, people would say, oh, you can't go. We can't. He handed over the church and went back to Scotland. Then he came back once to visit them after two years. And after that, he went back and he died about eight years after he left Ghana. And he, 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 he left. He left the church of Pentecost. That's the church of Pentecost that we are seeing today. I 
as the largest church in the whole country. He left them. He said that, be there. Do your best. By the grace of God, he was able to manage the success of a great church. And it has thrived even up to today. So by the grace of God, whether it's called Morning Star, Elias City Church, uh, what? Cut the anointing. Lighthouse. Now they're the names Bebre. You can't even know who is who. It's good. It's good. When the lions are chasing the zebras, they can't see which particular zebra to catch. But the lions are so many. Is this a lion? Is it a zebra? Or is it going up and down? So God is going to bless you. So I want you to be blessed. And let's move on. When we started a new names in our churches, people were saying, oh, this, this. people are right saying that, that somebody has taken the church. This and that. Look, each step of the way, you get it. You have somebody, a loser, who will be criticizing, saying all kinds of things. 